I'm sitting here with Lucent, um, producer, songwriter, um, vocalist. <laughs> he makes his own music. He does he does it all pretty much. And um, we were just talking uh, for we just had a really good conversation. It's one of those conversations that I, I wish we had uh, just been recording, but it's um, it's all good though because we get to have a second conversation here right now. And um, you, you're 20 years old. Yes, sir. And where to even start? <laughs> like, you're from the Salt Lake area, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, you, well, how old were you when you first started producing music? So I was probably about 17, 16, no, about 16 years old when I started actually producing music. I started learning how to make music when I was about 12, 13 years old, learning how to play guitar, bass, piano, drums. And then once I first got my laptop after saving up for a couple months, that's when I started taking the rap stuff seriously, been influenced from my brother, multiple friends, multiple uh, songwriters. And then I just started trying to find my own vibe, starting to get better, get more into the engineering, the production, the uh, mixing and mastering of everything. and then. Now I'm here today, and now you're you're actually like um, selling beats and like putting a lot of time, a lot of energy into it. Yes, sir. Uh, once I started, once I started making beats, it was a little bad, not the best, most definitely. Started getting better at that. Started learning who everyone is inside of this uh, community, mm -hmm. and then right after that, uh, I would just have people come to my place. We would make beats together you know, focused on their kind of like Because you have, you have a, a studio at your house. Yes. Right? That yeah. You, that you've kind of assembled and mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive. Like that's, um, yeah, that's like really impressive. You usually don't see that, but that's like, that's dedication. It it's is. Like... <laughs> After years of uh, doing a little mischief and, you know, building up some money, I wanted to put all that money into music production it's what makes me go it makes me human makes me be able to open up and basically investing in yourself instead of investing in the stock market or something right 100 like, percent. yeah which is which is really cool and how how far would you say that you've come since you since you first started like do you go back and listen to some of your some of your early stuff and be like wow what was i doing yeah i definitely do check out a bunch of my older stuff and when i've done that when I do listen to my older stuff, I'm just like a little cringe. Like it, it's definitely nice to listen to the older stuff because it's like ideas that I had that I want to build up on. So it definitely helps me with what I want to try and do today, but I've definitely come more of a long way, especially knowing what I want to do, whether it's in the moment, whether it's emotion, et cetera, anything, it just all comes to mind. But each day I just keep growing and getting better and the influence around everyone the influence of everyone around me is just amazing it definitely helps too and you're still quite young at the age of 20 and so you've got lots of room for like um for just continuing the onward and upward trend yes and um and you played for me a song that it was unreleased right yes yes and i was really impressed by it like i could i could see that you have really come a long way like that's i like i love that i can't wait to see what you're going to be coming out with in the future because I mean it's really not fair it's not fair to judge an artist by like the first stuff that they do while they're learning you know what I mean it's um definitely um I'm definitely impressed with uh with your potential thank that, you that, that I've been able to see um the we we're talking about how the rap community around here actually once you start kind of like knowing people um you find out just how how extensive it is right like there's a pretty yeah. Salt, Lake. Salt Lake has an active, vibrant community. About a year ago when I first started, about a year ago when I first started getting serious and wanting to do this, like, it was just crazy to me. Like, I knew some people from uh, certain things I used to do, and I never knew that they were so into music until I, you know, started talking more about them. And then they started putting me on with way more people. And then it's really crazy. When you're first starting out, like, you don't realize how like you feel like it's just yourself until you see that there's almost a hundred plus people out here doing their own thing and it's I wouldn't say it's 
more of a contest, but it's definitely just amazing because it helps you get inspired and it helps you see how other people grow in their own ways as well. Mm. Um, what uh, what style of music exactly would you describe? I mean, because you, you have a little bit of blend of like different styles, right? And plus, plus your own style thrown in there, different influences, because you didn't just start out as rap. Yeah, no. So when I first started getting into guitar, all I wanted to do was be in a band. I met a couple people, the band stuff didn't usually work out because you have to have a collaborative effort from every single one, but I've had influences from like death metal, rock, 80s rock, old metal, um, a lot of indie stuff. I definitely want to pursue more into that sort of thing, but as of now, I do just kind of want to focus on the rap stuff because there's so much potential you can do. At the end of the day, it really is all just kind of music. It's what you want to do with it, whether it's putting a guitar into a beat, making it heavy metal, making it an instrumental, etc. You know, there's just so much random stuff that you can do. And by the way, I want to say nice sense of style. You got the red, white, red, white um, got a chain theme on going me. on here. If I can get it, got a chain on me. Very nice. Uh, got a little Dior scarf. I like to keep it simple. No, um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that like, I am so not fashion conscious, like it's not even on my radar, but I can appreciate it in people that actually do pay attention and actually care, <laughs> like, you know, because they go to the effort to... I mean, style is almost kind of like a personality, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, it's another way people express themselves. Uh, it definitely feels weird being in all black. I look like I should be out there playing guitar, shredding on it. But on a hot day in the hot sun in the summertime, <laughs> like all black isn't isn't the coolest. Like, it's cool, but it's not cool. You know it's I mean? like not. It's, it's hot as hell. <laughs> I mean, I like it. I've been wearing almost all black my whole life, so I'm used to the heat. If anything, the cold bothers me more than the heat. So, mm. it's just something you get used to over time. Okay. Yeah. I um. Where I work, it gets pretty pretty hot, like in the, the garage, um, and so uh, I'm I feel like I get a little bit acclimated to it, like to kind of get used to it. But then when winter comes, like that's it's deadly. <laughs> I feel that's the thing about living in Utah is um, you do get kind of like you don't get a total extreme, but you get pretty hot and pretty cold. Yeah, seriously, it's so bipolar here. I swear, there's only three seasons. It's the summer, the winter, and construction season. Mm -hmm. And um, the other day, like, it was, like, raining pretty good. And just oh, yeah. Kinda, like, which I liked. I kind of cooled things off a bit. Yeah, for sure. And everything. Um, living in Utah, um, how has that affected, I don't know, it just affected your upbringing and your psyche, would you say? You know... A lot of people taught, like, when you think about Utah, you think of it being way religious, but it's really crazy. I mean, I do see a lot of religious people out there, but most people here, like, have their own mindset of that. And then, you know, growing up more and the people who kind of migrate here, it's really cool to see there's so many people who come here just because it's considered, like, a safer sa state, but um, it really isn't what it seems underneath when you start getting into certain places and certain things um, and like I said with people migrating here more like it's really cool to see different ethnicities different people from other states like California Chicago Florida etc but at the same time as cool as that is to see it you'll catch yourself you know being in a room with someone who's from Cali and then someone who's from Florida and then they start beefing out just because of like gang violence or mm -hmm. west side east side etc it's a whole mess mm -hmm. it's definitely crazy utah is something else i will say now i mean i'm i'm mormon or lds um and i'm but I've, I've always though like never like judged people or never like you know what i mean like um i've got my own beliefs like about god and so forth but i'm interested and genuinely interested in like other people's ideas, other people's beliefs, and like you and I were talking some pretty good philosophy earlier, even getting into like consciousness. Yeah, and I mean, really, like it's so crazy. We all are just like carbon-based substances. We are just 
who we are there's no you know there's no answer to it all we'll never know but I feel like with my own ideal ideology and my own philosophy definitely have to be like everything has a purpose everything lives and dies I feel like the universe it was said to start from a big bang and I feel like it's all gonna die out just to start a new big bang and I feel like everything's gonna go in a loop and there's probably another chance that this has happened before or it's gonna happen in the future billions of years from now um, and then it's just crazy because we don't know what's outside of the universe and thinking of a god especially or a higher power there has to be something that's having this happen with the universe and then it makes me think if that person is controlling this is there a person behind that person does it keep on going it's it's kind of like the idea idea of infinity that we were talking about like infinity is everything we're almost everything like everything is one I feel and then we were talking about how we're limited by the fact that like like we can't we can't picture what four dimensional space would be like right we can say time is a fourth dimension yeah but in terms of like like adding an, another dimension to space it's like if you were a two-dimensional being you couldn't imagine yeah. like yeah like definitely like the one dimension it being like back and forth and then you add the second dimension back and forth up and down third dimension actually creating a space so it's a whole environment to be in and then the fourth dimension we can't comprehend that like it could definitely be time but at the same time I feel like time is constructed by man and that's what makes us work and give us you know life I can't say life but almost like a prison at that too like Time is what we rely on. Time is more valuable than money because time is all we have in our own life. We, we talked about that a little bit too, right? About yeah. How, like I, I just live a simple life, and it's because I buy myself lots of time to think and philosophize. And, exactly. Like, that, that's what I prioritize. <laughs> like being a human, uh, you give yourself your own knowledge just by thinking about what is what it is, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like what everything really is. And that's definitely a great thing to do I wish I had more time too because all I do is just work serve do a loop of every single thing every single day and um, it's kind of kind of crazy do you remember being a little kid and like summer vacation would come and you felt like it was gonna last forever oh. like the first day yeah the first day of summer vacation yeah for sure that like when you're a kid you start going to school I feel that you're just like you're just like you just kind of don't comprehend it until you do start getting to a certain age and then school is done, summer seems like it lasts forever, and then it really doesn't. And then once you get out of school, then you start living your life being a human, then like, that's when everything really gets put onto you because that's what really matters. Have you thought about like, okay, by the time, by the time summer vacation ends, on the one hand, like I mean, like elementary school or something, you know, and it's particularly pronounced. Yeah. Um, because when I was like in third grade or whatever, I thought that like half the year was like vacation and half the year was school. Yeah. Like, because that's what it felt like. Yeah, right? seriously. And um, then yeah. And then it's like one fourth of the year is actually summer, and three fourths is school. Is stuff school, like yeah. that. With, 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 with occasional breaks for like UEA or like. Um, for like Christmas, yeah, <laughs> get a little bit of time in there, off. But by the by the end of summer, you start to kind of get curious, right? Well, you start to be in, be like, oh, I want to see some friends I haven't seen in a while over the summer. And yeah, I haven't, like, and you're kind of almost ready to go back, like, like you don't want to do homework again. You don't want to sit there bored, but the waiting for the bell ring. Yeah, the aspect, and, the, the people, like that's really what life's about, right? Is that yeah, connection? very much so. Honestly, like, uh, and it is crazy because once you do graduate, you kind of think to yourself, like, school wasn't as bad as it seems, even though it was annoying. And then once summer ends, the day before school, I remember, like, you know, you're going to bed and you're just excited because school's about to start again anyway, but then you get into school and you're like, ah. <laughs> and then even on top of that like it's so weird to think about the whole time thing especially with school because when you do graduate and you're on your own life like like how do I put it into words um oh my lord yeah take your time you're alright like 
school was pretty much like working because once you do graduate all you really do is just work and then see how far you can get into that work and mm -hmm. that's all I think it's sad when some people just um, they they think that life is all about just like how much money can I accumulate or how mm -hmm. much you know whatever and then they end up just missing out it's like there was um, there was someone that worked at the at a hospital and I don't want to get into like names or anything like that. I don't even I don't even know her name, but like personal identification things or whatever. But yeah, um, I think she was maybe a nurse, but she wouldn't go out and do anything with her friends. She wouldn't whatever. She was just very very much like focused on like you know saving money because she wanted to retire early and everything else. And so like for a couple decades she was doing that, and then one day she um, one day she started choking. Really. Yeah, she, she was at work, she started choking, she went into a restroom to, because uh, she was probably embarrassed, went into a restroom to try and like, you know, do some kind of Heimlich maneuver type thing on herself or whatever. She was a nurse, so she would like know what to do, right? But she ended up dying. Oh my lord. There. And because you never know, you never know what could happen, right? So all that time, that's so sad, like that she could have been out there having fun, she could have been, and then it's all just in an instant just gone all in yeah all of her hopes and dreams of like you know planning up for retirement and you know all these years of just working and I mean that's why they say like when you're when you're old and in a nursing home and you're about to die and you, you get to that point where you're just looking back on your life like regrets no one at that point is gonna be like oh I wish I had made more money <laughs> yeah no seriously it's it's definitely all about connections like like we were literally just talking about time kind of is what is most valuable but making the most of your life is probably the most that's probably what life is all about because you take what's given to you and you want to make those connections you want to make the best of it and you want to have great memories just so when you do look back on it that's what you had um and it's so weird because like a lot of people out there be like you need to hustle, you need to do this, or else, you know, you're never gonna, you know, make it. You need to put in that work and all that hustling. And then when you really think about it, like, like you just said, there's a point that you're gonna get to where you're hurting yourself from working too much. Like, you always gotta have those breaks. Like, yeah, definitely putting in the hustle and putting in the grind to just make it to the point that you want, that's, good but at the same time it's like how much are you putting in into that specific thing before it you know you're like losing out on stuff you know well and then also it feels really good to make a difference in someone else's life yeah true and a lot of times it's things that might seem kind of small or ordinary things you might even forget about that other people remember it's like uh a little while ago, someone sent me a message, someone that I knew from elementary school. Really? Uh, yeah, he, he sent me a message saying, um, and I mean, we, we were connected like on Facebook and everything else, but so I don't know why just out of the blue he decided to send it this one day, but he's like, he's like hey, I want to thank you for like, because there was this time when um, I was, well, he, he said he was getting beat up, but I don't know if he was necessarily getting beat up, but um, like fully, like full on, whatever. But he, he was probably he probably was scared to death because he was uh, maybe in fourth grade and I was like in sixth grade or something at the time. And he says that like a couple kids were kind of bullying him basically. Then I came up and I told them to stop and then I, I walked him home to make sure that he would be safe. And yeah. Stuff, you know? and, and he said that he's like he that he still remembered that and that it like meant a lot to him throughout his life. Yeah. And I was like, wow, just like one day I'm walking home and I just make the decision. Exactly. I could have just kept walking and just been like, you know, whatever, but, and I think it meant a lot to him that, that I actually like walked him home so he wouldn't have to be as scared yeah. you know, on the way home. No, that's, that's genuinely, oh my gosh, that's genuinely amazing. Like Thanks. I've definitely had experiences like that as well. Like being kind to other people, like, oh my gosh, like that friend, you know, Q, of course, yeah, yeah, you yeah. interviewed him. Yeah. Like, I remember when we first hung out, like, like, I'm grateful for him for coming to the studio and yeah. especially building up a connection between us two. Yeah. But he always says he'll be grateful for me because I gave him a chance too, just to come into a studio. But at the end of the day, we were just 
having fun making music and that's mm -hmm. what life is all about it was it was definitely a great connection like even if it's something small or something big doing the most for other people out there can really make a difference it can open up their eyes it's a, it's and you, a big thing you know what was kind of crazy and kind of ironic and stuff is um when I was younger, I didn't really listen to music. Mm -hmm. yeah, just because, like I said, I like to think and philosophize. Right? And I just liked quiet and peace. And I like my brothers and siblings and stuff. They all like, because uh, I have some step-siblings and stuff too. Um, they uh, they all would listen to music. And they were all they all had their own, you know, music and whatever that they would listen to. My favorite hobby was just sitting there and closing my eyes in peace and quiet when I got the chance. <laughs> like, like that, like I was weird. I was really weird that way. But, um... Whereas music was a distraction then, now um, that I actually know a lot of people that, that make music and I know how much they put their emotions into it and how much um, how much work they put into it and just how meaningful it is to them yeah. and how much it means to them that someone actually listens to it and, and cares about it and can see the, the, the quality and the good in it. Um, that makes me appreciate music like so much more you know like it's no it's not it's no longer just like this sound yeah yeah no i mean like it's so crazy i remember i was making music and i mean i still am but like putting so much time and thought and energy and thinking about my past experiences and putting it into words mm -hmm. and especially being able to make the beat even if it's not the lyrics but making the beat as well you can put a lot of emotion into just a soundtrack mm -hmm. and adding all of the inspiration from your own life and mm -hmm. putting it into words mm -hmm. that's a, another big thing as well and so it all comes together and then like you were saying whether it's one person two people have a couple fans being able to show something to someone and even if they're lying and they say they like it that's good but those people who are genuinely appreciative mm -hmm. of hearing the music um, and actually wanting to listen to it mm. is literally amazing to me. I don't care if it's one fan, a billion fans, a hundred fans, a thousand, etc. It mm. literally means the world to me, just mm -hmm. having someone to listen to. And I really wish I could talk to more people that listen to my music that I don't know who they are because I like to talk to the people who listen to my music and see what they think about it and see what they like about it and like what they would like to hear from me as well that's another thing um it's definitely crazy yeah um there was uh okay what you just said kind of reminded me of um something that sear said once to me aka buck seven yeah. now um he he said that like uh okay because like at the at the loading dock like I went to a show and um, they put like an A for like artists and then like people that are there to like watch and support and everything else they they put an X on their hand at least that's what they used to do yeah that's what they used to do and Sear said something I thought was pretty cool he's like uh, he he take he like pointed to my hand and he's like um, he's like X marks the spot because that's where the treasure is. <laughs> That's really, that's smart. That's he is, awesome. he is really smart, especially like with words and stuff. Like he's one of those people that can just freaking freestyle. And then like my friend uh, Tony, um, who I, uh, he's, I did an interview with him. Um, but I think you said you, you'd even seen part of it. Yeah. But he's also like a magnificent freestyler. Those are the two, they have different styles. They have different styles of freestyle. Cause one is more like, I, I don't know how to, how to put the difference between like rap and hip hop. Um, especially when it comes to like freestyling, but I would say that um, I would say that Tony is maybe a little bit more melodically oriented, but both of them can like put together, throw together some epic rhymes just off the top of their head. Like I, I was just really showing you from the Halloween concert, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, hey, Sarah, you think you can pull a freestyle out of thin air? Like, uh, out of thin air? Like, I don't even care. Look yeah. at my eyes. I see a mean stare. Mean yeah. Yeah. That was and he went on cool. for like a minute. <laughs> like, doing that. He could have gone on for freaking forever. Like, I swear, you could put people like that. Just put them in a room and just have them, like, tell them to freestyle in front of a microphone, especially. Yeah. And they, like, some people could just go forever and just, like, not stop. <laughs> One way to live forever. <laughs> yeah. 100% through the words. Mm-hmm. 
putting an engraving on the world from what you say too, or what you do, mm -hmm. especially. Yeah. Now, each individual here, I need to definitely take more time to talk to them and hang out with them. Everyone here is special in their own ways. Um, and that's just amazing. It's what makes us human. We're all each unique individual people. Well, and if you if you do come to, um, the, the friend's having a concert at um, Kilby Court tonight, and uh, Lucent might, might be coming, and if he does, then he'll have a chance to meet some uh, some people I'll introduce him to. Um, but uh, if, what, what was it you said that I was going somewhere with it? I was going to tie that into, oh, oh, people. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 like getting to know more people and like networking and just like, on the one hand, it's like a huge community. On the other hand, it's kind of like tight knit, you know, it's kind yeah. of like, um, yeah, like, like you can say like, oh, have you heard of so-and-so? They're like, oh yeah, I like their music or, or if they haven't, then you could be like, oh, here, let me show you. Yeah, for you sure. Know? No, that's what's amazing about the community. Like, like, like I said, each individual person is unique and it's really great to hear what everyone's doing if you haven't heard of them because it can even inspire you. Like, you don't need to be a big artist to go out and inspire people. You don't even need to be an artist to inspire people. You can just literally be yourself and you can yeah. inspire people. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how the mind works and, mm -hmm. you know, how each individual can really affect you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were thinking about, or we, we were talking about whether or not there's, you know, a God and like you, you, like you were explaining earlier to me about how you do believe that there's some sort of, some sort of higher power. You can't put your finger on it or you don't, you're not religious yeah. per se or, or anything like that, you know, and like, um, uh, I, I can totally respect that and I mean even if you were atheist like some of the smartest people I know are atheists like I don't hold anything against them or whatever um, but when it comes to uh, when you start thinking about like people and connections and um, and just it just everything um, it makes you think like there's got to be some purpose to this right yeah like, doesn't it yeah, no, there, I feel like there definitely has to be some purpose. Um, like I said, we'll never know, but whatever okay, it is. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. Yep. <laughs> Remember how I told you that when I, was, when I was talking to someone last night, that person just, like, messaged me? Yeah. <laughs> well, now here I am talking to someone else, and they just happen to, like... <laughs> it's crazy how the um, world works. The same person. Just as you and I are talking about, like connecting with people and like you know chance and fate and you know all this stuff whatever and um then just cause, that's hilarious because like it was only about an hour ago i was telling you about how like uh, i'm like yeah he happened to just like in that case he, he i was on the phone but in this in this case um i'm recording but it's still the same principle and I'm, the same person <laughs> yeah is it i mean Almost asking you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like when stuff like that happens, would you say it's a coincidence? Do you think it happens to be fate, or do you think it is what it is? Um, when, okay, my own personal view, I believe that we all lived before we came to Earth. Yeah. And that, um, that we chose to come here because there's like a purpose served in it. Um, and there's opportunities for growth, basically, that, that we couldn't have in any other way. Yeah. Where um, we can make choices in the context of like being here. Because, um, okay, we were talking about consciousness, right? Like, yeah. I don't think that consciousness comes from the brain. I think that consciousness comes from um, something that we can't comprehend. Like, we were saying how we can't comprehend fourth dimension, fifth dimension, you know, so on and so forth, let alone infinite dimensions or something, right? Kind of like a soul. I don't think we'd be able to comprehend a soul something like that yeah like like because every, everything we can comprehend in this life is mostly just like a um like putting together ideas that we've learned or like physical objects we've encountered and thoughts and you know ideas and stuff and uh reassembling them like that's how we make sense of things right is in context of other things we've been exposed to yeah um and we just take it for granted. We're like, oh yeah, gravity. Like we, we still don't even fully understand that. No, but, not but, at all. But even before Einstein, and when, when they had like no no clue really what gravity was, people just take it for granted. They're like, oh yeah, that's gravity. Yeah, <laughs> you know? seriously. I mean, actually, um, 
when the like it's actually really crazy i've seen some stuff on youtube where way back then where it was the greeks like way before uh you know we had bc and ad mm -hmm. um there was like ships of greek ruins where they had like this crazy astrology clock that would tell you something on that specific day where the stars aligned which is really crazy that that was found out way before like gravity and technology and all that stuff and then way before that when all the pyramids were built i don't know if you've seen this but all the pyramids in egypt they all align with specific stars that are up in the sky perfectly mm -hmm. in an astrologic astrology astrological astrological pattern mm -hmm. yes you you had it you had it like you yeah. thank you you got it um hey by the way can i ask you to do something kind of kind of unique what's up Were you, the the person that that was uh, trying to call me you know how to get a hold of them, right? Yeah. Would you mind just really quickly texting them, and just and I don't want to say who it was, but j just text them and say, "Hey, um, we're we're just doing an interview." They actually just, called me. Oh, too. they did. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it, just maybe text them and just say like, "Hey, um, we'll, yeah, just whatever you want to say, but just let them know that we didn't, we're not ignoring them." He just opened it. <laughs> That's gonna be, that's gonna be funny showing this <laughs> the interview to him later. Um, <laughs> For sure, one hundred percent. One of those moments. I'm glad that I'm so glad that happened because just capturing that just in the middle of the interview, just like bam, you know, really, really brings something. I don't know. No, definitely something to talk about and something to <laughs> to remember forever. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, what do you think of like? Because a lot of a lot of people talk about like the Matrix, right? And like yeah. the idea of like um, simulation theory, that kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm just telling no. him we'll yeah. be heading over soon. Okay. Uh, what do I believe about simulation theory, like the Matrix? What do you find? Do you find it interesting? Because like there, there's this argument that goes that like. Um, like eventually there will be more simulated worlds than there are actual worlds right um if technology just continues growing at, at its current rate because right now there are simulated worlds they don't fully simulate anything but yeah like a video game it like could be gta considered. yeah like like a simulated world i don't believe there's consciousness involved in that but according to the argument if we reach a point where like neural networks and that kind of thing where we where we can like emulate consciousness or create consciousness on a computer then you there, there will reach a point where most people or m most conscious beings will be in a simulation believing that stuff's going on that's actually not going on but it's just a simulation so so then the argument goes well if that's just the state of like reality then who's to say that we are not in one of those simulations you know that's genuinely it's actually that just brought an idea to my mind yeah um real quick like there was something i saw on youtube as well there was a scientist and uh, a computer programmer who actually made a robot an ai and the ai started having conversations with the computer technologists and that ai started developing actual constant consciousness and didn't want to be a robot anymore and that's really crazy to think about because you're creating a non you know a non-livable conscious um and that's just i don't know if that's cruel or fucked up or something but it's definitely interesting um and it just makes me think like it could get to the point where you're making consciousness happen in an actual video game full of ones and zeros and then at that same time it's like once it gets to that point we could actually probably make ourselves into the matrix but it would be reversed where we're living in a video game state mm -hmm. which is almost like vr um we're like like in other words people want maybe immortality or something right and yeah they can create their own like you could have all your memories wiped and then transferred over to a computer like you like yourself and live in this ideal world where you're king of the yeah. universe or something right that would be <laughs> i don't that would be and that then, would be spooky and then it just plays forever 
Um, <laughs> or, or you could have like, like all of your best memories just play over and over again, like relive them over and over and over again in an infinite loop. Then you just forget about them each time, then live it over again. Your consciousness just keeps living its happiest moments. <laughs> I feel like as cool as that would be, I feel like that would It'd be, be messed up. <laughs> it would be... It'd be fake. It would be fake, yeah. It would be... Uh, you would start growing attached to the memory just for it to die out, just for it to replay again. I feel like it would be... It would almost be an endless cycle of a happy prison that has no meaning almost mm -hmm. it's almost life <laughs> yeah um what i was gonna say about like and i mean that's that's a really interesting thought by the way that you bring up but what i was gonna say is like my own personal belief actually is somewhat similar to the simulation idea in that like like i was describing earlier how i believe we lived before we came to earth yeah and um then here we are on earth um and this isn't like our real true home, but this whole earth life, like this mortal existence is kind of in a sense, kind of a simulation where like it, 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 it's real, but like, like I believe that rocks actually exist. I believe, you know, atoms actually exist and so forth, but it's kind of like controlled circumstances like a simulation yeah. would be, you know what I mean? It's, it's all just a theory. Literally everything is all just a theory mm -hmm. that everyone has made up and we just believe um mm -hmm. i have seen some stuff too like you know we could have came from like fish that evolved into like apes that evolved into humans or i've seen stuff where it's like an alien made a baby with an ape which is how humans were made or different theories yeah stuff like that it goes on and on and on like mm -hmm. like we'll never know well, it's crazy. We don't know that we'll never know, though. <laughs> true, true. It, it would be... You know, it's actually really weird. I have crazy dreams all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't lucid dream, but I somehow always put myself into a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. Like, it was really weird because I had two you dreams. lucid dream, but you lucid dream. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I interrupted you. No, no, you're all good. Um, I feel like... In one of these dreams I had, I ended up crashing into a mountain, and when I died, my like vision just kind of kept floating and floating until it got into space, and then I finally woke up. And then I had another dream where someone shot me in the back of the head, and then immediately after that, like I felt a pain in my head, and I immediately woke up. And that would just be really weird, like, imagine dying and you wake up in a new fucking reality of actually yeah yeah like almost like multiverse theory imagine yeah. dying and your conscious right now gets put into a dream of another reality that you're living into and that mm -hmm. dream which we're living in wakes you up and to that new reality that would be a trippy idea after death that is, that is so fascinating um and then it, it, it does get back to the idea of where, um, I mean, that like what you're saying is kind of similar to reincarnation. Yeah. Right? Um, but then it, it all comes back, though, ultimately to the idea or the question of, like, what is the meaning and purpose of it all? And in my mind, okay, like, uh, like my beliefs make sense because um, if, you, if you think of consciousness as not being something that's generated by the brain, but as an independent thing. Yeah. Um, even though like like AI programs can like act like they're like they're conscious like like let's say that they can say that they're feeling pain but they don't actually feel pain like let, let's just say okay let, let's just say that I'm right about that sorry no yeah you're fine um, then the question is like why would we come into this mortal life like what purpose would it serve right but my my answer to that is that um, as conscious beings see god could have just created us all perfect yeah but <clears throat> consciousness i think because i think the nature of consciousness is something we can't comprehend um i think that a perfect version of you wouldn't be you does no. that make sense yeah no and i think that because god is all loving he loves even things that are imperfect yeah 100 percent and so he wanted to create imperfect things, but then he wanted to give them a chance to um, 
a chance to still grow and he wanted to share his perfection with them so it would be as though they were perfect too yeah that's why <clears throat> that's why i genuinely believe like when i say we're all one and all is one like it's kind of on your theory too like it all ties together that we're trying to achieve something but at the same time at the start of it all we're still all just one with everything if that makes sense yeah like like it's it's all connected um, it's all yeah i actually have a couple of theories too uh when you bring that up like like there could be a heaven and hell or there could be a heaven and maybe that's the fourth dimension but why would there be a heaven if you die just to live in an infinite space but that could like i said be the fourth dimension it was it's really weird um uh mm -hmm. oh my gosh sorry you're fine, you're fine. It was, it's really weird because I've had times happen in my life, things happen in my life that were just really weird. Like I was going to California for my great grandpa's funeral and he would always talk about how he loved Blue Jays and all that stuff. Yeah. And a week after he died, we were all having a picnic outside, me and my family. And somehow a Blue Jay shows up in California next to our picnic when they're rarely sighted there yeah. and the blue jay was literally walking around yeah. our picnic and we touched it we literally like looked at it and every nice. time we would look at it it would like give us a weird look back uh -huh. it, was, it makes me think like it could be reincarnation of my grandpa wanting to be a blue jay or it could be another idea of when you do die you become a fourth dimensional being and you almost construct things to happen around people that you want them to see to know give them an idea that you're there but you can't see them or and, and it could also be that it wasn't his like he wasn't necessarily reincarnated but that was maybe his way of letting you know that that he was there yeah but he's not limited to being a bird does yeah that, does that make sense yeah 100 percent. i i also kind of feel like um I feel like no matter, like, I don't know, I had this idea also, I feel like when you die, what you want to become after death mm -hmm. is what you become. Uh -huh. That's an idea I have. Like, you have a choice in the matter. Yeah. Like, I wish I believe that too. Yeah. Um, another weird thing that happened, it was really crazy, this is kind of what makes me think of the fourth dimension and higher beings. Um, you know, I don't take many drugs anymore now. Sometimes I'll yeah. drink, sometimes I'll smoke. Yeah. But I remember the last time I took psychedelics with one of my friends, we took yeah. some mushrooms. I love meditating. Every single day I meditate for about 30 minutes to an hour. Oh, but nice. I was meditating on the psychedelic and I saw this crazy animal thing that had a bunch of colors. It was like green, red, purple. It was like this rainbow being made of all these shapes triangles and polygons and it came into my mind after deep meditation and it almost like talked to me saying everything will be okay and it opened its mouth mm. and it's like it consumed my conscience conscience yeah. Yeah. and after it did that i was like i felt scared but after it consumed me saying it was going to be okay i just felt this bliss and felt okay being here in the universe yeah. um and then another time when I was uh, meditating, I remember listening to uh, Mac Miller a lot. And I thought to myself, like, man, I wish I could have met Mac Miller before he died. And I was thinking that on the psychedelics. And the next day, I fell asleep and I had this dream. I went to the store and I saw literally like this cigarette wrap and it had one of Mac Miller's album covers on. And it's like I almost reached out to him because he literally walked into my dream, said what's up, and said bye. And I never met him, but when I saw him in my dream, it's like I met him before. It was really weird. That's that's really cool. I mean, that sounds like pretty epic it, as an experience. It, it's really weird. I I just feel like after death, like you can definitely be what you want. You could roam in the universe, be a new dimensional being. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And that, that's why I think that, like, I think that 
before we came to Earth, there was lots of different experiences that we had and choices, and that we chose to come here. We weren't forced to come here. Yeah. Like that makes more sense to me. Like if there was, if there is a purpose for our being here, it makes more sense to us that we chose it. Yeah. Because it wouldn't make any sense for like God to to, to just be like, okay, I'm gonna just like create these beings and they're going to go through this existence where they're part of it's going to be painful and everything else it, without giving them a choice you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. i don't know it also makes me think that that's what makes me almost disbelieve a god as well because since we're in a space and everything's carbon there's probably a chance out that out there that there's more intelligent life because since everything's already made out of carbon um there's another chance that everything could be recreated on another planet too mm -hmm. and who knows what they believe well not everything has to be carbon though there's like silicon and you know, silicone yeah. yeah um but uh think for a second about the whole idea of like we don't know what we don't know we don't know that we don't know it yeah right? and that's one of the things i've talked to sir about before is um there is so much that it's like to, st to build a fire, right? Um, people knew about air, but they didn't know about oxygen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so they might think, okay, all we need is air and heat and something to burn, right? And then they might have been like, okay, so now we, now we know how fire works. But it's like, no, they don't realize there's chemical stuff going on. There's stuff that they can't see. You know, behind another, the scenes. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, I think another thing like that that's also crazy is the I, the fact, I don't know how scientists, scientists prove this, but the fact that our moon causes tides and waves yeah, in yeah. the ocean. The gravity. Yeah, due to gravity. That's really crazy to me. It's very special. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got you. Sorry, one second. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Are you okay with Camel Crush? Ibuprofen? Ibuprofen or aspirin? No, no, I don't I think don't we have. have, any we don't have. Or yeah, no, that's okay. But we're doing an interview though, so. All right, thank you, sir. All you smokers all have that in common. No matter what else is going on, you gotta bum a cigarette. Always. <laughs> um. Uh, what was I in the middle of? Uh, talking about carbon, uh, fires. You know. Yeah. How shit just happens. Sorry, I probably shouldn't swear. Uh, no, I'm not like offended or something. Like I'm not like I listen to music that has you guys freaking use the f word left and right. So oh, I'm not, like, no, I mean it. Like <laughs> yeah, of course I swear in a lot of music because it's yeah. gonna be my music and I show emotion and so do other people. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to try and swear on in a in an interview that I'm in. Like oh okay, might as well be a little bit professional. Well, at, at least you didn't use like the worst. Like you could have just like. <laughs> Just, you could have like had some big tirade of like you know a dozen horrible <laughs> word like the worst possible things. Oh god, dang it! <laughs> duh, duh. Crazy. Actually, a funny story. Like the, the day before I left on my mission, this is like going back years ago. But the day before I left on my mission, I was trying to do everything right and everything you know. And so um, I lost something important though, and I was like looking through the whole house for it. Yeah. I don't even remember what it was now. But my younger brother, one of my younger brothers, um, told me later, he's like, or like, like years later, he's like, I have never, never in my life heard what I remember at that time, which was the most angry string and the most angry and longest string of non-swear words. Non-swear words. <laughs> <laughs> this is the day before my mission. I'm not going to be like, you know, yeah, yeah. swearing or something with like, dag, nab it, freaking, <laughs> freaking heck. Freaking heck. <laughs> Sticks and oh my gosh, H E double hockey stick. <laughs> and I probably yelled, "Get off my lawn!" Or something <laughs> like that. You know, just some random stuff just to get. But yeah, I don't. I don't know why I couldn't find it, but it was just. <laughs> it was just kind of funny when he told me that because I had forgotten about that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. The day before my mission, that is. I was like all mad because I couldn't find. <laughs> that is pretty goofy. Find this thing, yeah. Um, I don't know why this literally just came to my mind. Here's another thing that messes with me um yeah. you know i don't know if it's called deja vu everyone always tells me it's not called deja vu i know it's called something but it's when you dream something and it happens in real life 
Um, that that could be okay. Um, that could be very closely tied to deja vu. Like, but because a lot of times people don't remember their dreams, right? Yeah. And so deja vu could be when you don't remember it being a dream, but maybe it was a dream. Does that make sense? Well, the point, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, no, I get you. Uh, the point I am getting yeah, to, yeah, though, yeah. is, like, I, I don't know how this happens with me, but I'll have a dream of something and it ends up happening, and it's just very weird. It happens to me almost every time I dream, like, the last time I, it, it happened, I literally had a dream where a package came to my house that I was expecting, mm -hmm. and in the dream I went upstairs, grabbed the package, and I was just so excited. And next thing you know, I wake up, go upstairs, and the package was actually there. Mm. It, stuff like that happens to me all the time. Yeah. It's very wacky. It, that is that is really cool. Like there there are a lot of interesting coincidences and things that make you just kind of like go like dang like um like like one okay like this one day this was going back a couple years ago but um i was on tracks and i was i was heading to like tracks for those that don't know is like the the train yeah for salt lake um public transportation train um and i was i was heading i was gonna go to 33rd south and then from there catch a bus home but instead of getting off i just felt like i needed to go to the next stop and it made no sense i was like really why should i do that but it's like almost like a force was preventing me from getting off on 33rd south and so i'm like I'm like okay i'm gonna miss my bus but i'll i'll go to 39th south so i did it i got off the train and i was like the only person around and i was like okay well now what i'm gonna do just go catch the train back to you know to the other direction but then as, as i was, was walking around i saw like this this tire from a bicycle like um and i walked closer and i saw that this guy and he ended up being like just totally totally drunk he had apparently been riding his bike right along the edge somehow and had fallen over and was kind of in the area that's like beneath the platform yeah but his head was just sticking out over where a train would have hit it oh my god yeah and so um i was like oh my heck so i like i like kind of like pulled him out and set his bike to, to the side and stuff and i kind of like waited for him to kind of like you know come to and everything and then he started crying and started telling me about like um how he'd gone to the bar because he had to fight with his wife and so on and so forth and and then he like uh he gave me a hug and he thanked me for everything and uh I, and for saving his life and everything and um the next day because he gave me his contact information yeah and um he was like a businessman he was he wasn't i mean yeah he, he was like a someone that you wouldn't expect to be to find in that situation you know what i mean like he wasn't down on his luck or something yeah not that there's anything wrong with people that are down on their luck but but they're more likely to be in that type of situation yeah you know um but I called him the next day and I was just planning on just like seeing how he was doing and so on and so forth. But he answers in like this businessman tone, just like, hello. And I'm like, hi, uh, my name's Ryan. And uh, I, I met you yesterday. And then he's like, well, I don't know who you are. You know, I'm in the middle of, uh, I'm, I, I've got this, like this meeting that's coming up or whatever. And then I, I didn't say to him like, you know, I saved your life last night. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, but in his mind, it's just like, I don't know why this guy has his no He was probably thinking, well, I was drunk last night and maybe I gave some guy my, you know, some random person my number and whatever, you know, but he, he obviously w had no interest in talking to me. That's so wacky. Yeah. It's, but, I mean, it's nice. It's fate that it seems like it's fate that force that brought you there. But at the same time, it's so weird how people will like ignore what happened or etc that's why it's so important to like be open to and just always loving and accepting and forgiving of others right yeah and it's like it's like after that after we hung up like i took that as like a learning experience because i didn't resent him at all yeah but i felt like i i saw more of his true vulnerable self the night before yeah like that's sure. more like who he really was yeah but he's probably his whole life had to put on this exterior of this rough you know whatever like this guy that's you know 
important in the business world or whatever. Um, but who he really was was that that junk guy that was um, he probably didn't even uh, I say probably, but I'm, I mean that's just like you know my my guess. But um, he he may have just been too guarded to like open up to his wife the things that he opened up to me about. You yeah. Know what I mean? For sure. And so his way of dealing with it was to just go to the bar and, and get drunk and internalize it rather than maybe growing up, he didn't have the, develop the skills to be able to talk things out. Yeah. You know? And, um, but he obviously cared about her and loved her. And that's, that's insane. Yeah. It's, it's sad. It's sad because he was probably like feeling cornered or something, you know? Yeah, and most definitely. I mean, how many times could you maybe encounter someone like that in, in daily life and just think, oh, that guy was a jerk? Or yeah. But there's so much more going on underneath the surface, you know? Very much so. It's, it's like that with so many people out there, too. Like, sometimes people need to open up and be themselves. Like, yeah, a lot of people out there will take your vulnerability vulnerability and take advantage of it but I don't mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. but yeah there's like um there's the selfish side of people but I don't think anyone that that's really truly who they are I yeah think they're better than that. I think I think some people get so lost in like putting up all these walls and barriers and selfishness and focusing on on their own you know lusts or whatever that uh, that they forget mm. that side of them but still underneath all of that in everyone I think is still there that true self which I think is actually genuine there's something in there yeah true yeah no 100% I always try and be myself I mean I shouldn't say I try I always do be myself like if I have something I need to say or something I want to get out I'll say it there's nothing I need to be hiding and I feel like a lot of more people should do that um but that's just me. I have met a lot of people who have been open and I really appreciate that about them and it just helps bond a better friendship. Yeah, yeah. Well, brother, uh, on that note, let me say that I'm glad that you're my friend, bro. I really appreciate it, man. Yes, and I'm so glad that we were able to sit down and have this. Um, do you want to spell out Lucent so people can look it up? Yes, if you are this far in the video, (laughs) let me say, I really appreciate it. I hope you've had a chance to think about whatever we're talking about. There's so much more stuff I could definitely talk about, but thank you for getting to this point in the video. My name is L-O-U-X-C-E-N-T, Lucent. On what platforms? On SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, you can find me on anywhere, honestly. I'm everywhere. If you want to talk to me, be open. I'm open arms. Yeah. Please come yeah. to me. This and guy, this guy's a, got a great heart. He's uh, easy to talk to, as you can see from this interview. <laughs> and he's a great guy, and I'm, I'm really blessed to know him. And even though technically we've known each other longer than we've actually, like, really known each other, because, like, we've we met and we had like seen each other around kind of thing you know whatever. yeah but, but yeah then um finally we get to actually like like sit down and have like a really good the first time having a good conversation going you know, in depth because there's yeah because there's there's the whole like you know superficial just kind of like oh yeah you know i know that person or whatever yeah but, or yeah i met them or whatever but but getting, then there's actually like getting to know someone yeah seriously um i've you know i talked about some stuff in my past like I would say that on here, but, you know, I don't really want to, like, say that to, you know, not more of exposing myself, but more, like, government issues and all that stuff, as, you know, I said before, Yeah. but, um, yeah, with the music and all that stuff, like, I try and be open as possible, try and talk about experiences I've had in the past, you know, going to jail three times, you know, being hurt by family, but also helping them out, following in their own footsteps, etc. And Um, you've learned from your mistakes, that's the important thing, right? Yeah, I have, like, each day, like, even right now, I'm growing more as a person, as everyone is, and I feel like, I feel like that's amazing. At one point, I just somehow grew up, and then now I'm at this point in my life where it's like... I can be myself, I can do whatever I want, as long as I'm not hurting anyone. And 
you know, it's made me happy to grow into the person I am today and there's so much more growing to keep on doing. It's like Absolutely. a sprout in the water. Absolutely. And the process is, um, is all the more enhanced when you're growing and learning with other people. Yes, very much so. Be open armed to everyone, talk about your thoughts, your feelings, and someone will be out there to help you. Another thing I want to say too, same with the music aspect, be yourself, go outside, do whatever you want, as long as you're not doing criminal stuff and hurting people. Be out there, inspire yourself, inspire others. That's what I try and do. I make my music because I want to inspire people, I want to show people that you can be who you want to be, yeah. no matter how hard the circumstances are. And yeah. just go out there. You can help other people be who they can, can be. And who, they, who they really want to be. 100%. Well, all right. Thank you. Well, cool. Until next time.